So welcome one and, one and all. I'm Stuart Alford. I'm the Chief Executive of Devon and Plymouth Chamber of Commerce. And welcome to our Chamber Live event. It's great to see um, both, uh, I wouldn't say old faces, familiar faces uh, and uh, new faces. Um, welcome to the new members. Welcome to the Chamber family. It's great to see you. Uh, the event today, uh, we're going to hear from Paul Philpot, Fresh Air Studios, uh, with an introduction to podcasting uh, as a tool to market your business. And, and Paul's done some fantac fantastic work with the Chamber. Um, so before we get into that, um, I'll just do a bit of uh, a bit of Zoom uh, etiquette. I'm sure you're all used to it by now, but uh, let me tell you anyway. I, I have the power. I'm pressing the mute all button, and that's not because um, I don't want to hear from you, but just to prevent any sort of background noise. If you're going to speak, remember to unmute. Uh, those of you who've, who've been on our events before will have heard me say, I think the three most common phrases of 2020 will be, you're on mute, uh, we need more clarity, and the money's run out. So those are the three uh, the three phases we're going to hear most of. Um, if you want to ask a question, feel free to raise your virtual hand in the participants function. Um, or if you want to put it in the chat, you can do that to everyone. But if you'd like to ask a question um, and you're uh, either too embarrassed to ask it from you or you want to, to come from someone else, then send it to me privately in the chat. You can use that function and I will ask it on your behalf. Uh, I have to let you all know this is being recorded. So if you don't want your, your face uh, appearing, then feel free to turn your camera off, but I hope you won't because you're all looking fab and it's much nicer to see a sea of faces and know there's living beings out there than just uh, little black screens. Um, and also, if you want to use social media, please do. Please say how great this event has been and use the hashtag Chamber Live. Um, if you don't think the event's been good, please don't put it on uh, social media. Tell us and we will make it better. Um, so uh, before I hand over to um, Paul, uh, I get a few minutes to tell you about uh, what's been happening across the British Chamber of Commerce network um, and uh, the work of British Chambers. And really, I want to start off with the extended uh, furlough scheme, which is great news for business, great news for saving individual jobs, and is as a direct result of campaigning by British Chambers of Commerce. In fact, um, our Director General Adam Marshall was with Rishi Sunak 40 minutes before he announced it, um, and he was sounding out business as to what uh, we thought of that. Um, so that's good. Um, on the not so good front, I think, is the postponement of the job retention bonus. I know it was only £1,000, but many small businesses have been um, uh, relying on that, looking forward to that coming in. Uh, and so that's been put off till the end of the furlough scheme. That's £1,000 per per position. Um, and also the announcement of the grants. So grants are always really welcome, and of course they'll help, but they are a, a relative pit, uh, pittance. So there's those that are based on what they call a hereditament, which is those who pay rates, and it's um, anywhere between about 1,300 and 3,500 pounds, roughly, uh, depending on what you pay in rates, is going to be for businesses that have had to shut because of um, coronavirus. But there's also a discretionary grant, and Plymouth City Council have been very good about um, working with us to establish the criteria for that um, a discretionary grant. And whilst it's very welcome, it is not enough to prevent businesses uh, from having difficulties by um, having fixed costs that they can't uh, cover. So uh, I also have a concern that company directors have once again been overlooked in these support schemes. So if you are a company director who's paid yourself by dividend um, uh, on the advice of your accountant, then um, you are going to really struggle to get any sort of support for yourself. So it's all very well the business having support, but if the director themselves uh, has financial difficulties, that could lead to business failures too. And we think that um, lockdown, as it's known, um, is a very blunt tool to deal with uh, the coronavirus. So I am not saying that action didn't need to be taken. Anyone who looks at those graphs with the increase in infection rates uh, skyrocketing at the end of the graph, um, nobody could say that action didn't need to be taken. The problem is that shutting down the whole economy is a very blunt tool. And what we need is surgical precision. We need the government to invest in a much better test, track and trace. And I have urged Devon MPs, I wrote to them all last week, saying allow the private sector to do this. The private sector is very good at reacting to need if it means they can carry on operating. So allow people to test in their own environments. 
At the moment, I don't see any widespread evidence of where the infection is being passed, and yet all businesses are being forced to shut. And we are saying where a business can show that it's COVID secure and it has proper uh, social distancing, proper sanitation, then allow it to operate. Um, but of course, where there are infections come down hard and quickly. And also offer support to those who have to self-isolate. In Austria, they have a really high um, compliance rate with their uh, self-isolation. They think it's 98% of people who are asked to self-isolate do. And that's because they have very generous support for those who do self-isolate. In this country, not only is there no support, but we can't even tell whether people are complying or not. The, the statistics say somewhere between 40 and 60 percent of people who should be self-isolating actually are so that is a really really worrying statistic um, so uh, i have written to the mp saying we need to use this time while we're in this uh, national uh, circuit break lockdown call it what you will to rapidly improve uh, testing have a rapid turnaround of testing provide much more widespread support to businesses that have to shut uh, extend Sybils uh, and the bounce back loan scheme, although um, loans aren't for everyone, uh, grants much more helpful um, and uh, use this time to improve the technology and allow uh, businesses to run. The, the, the aviation sector is being decimated. I've written to the MPs on behalf of uh, our airport here in Devon in, in Exeter um, because they say they could test privately. Uh, you check in an hour earlier, they get a test an hour before you fly and they will know whether or not they would let someone on the on the plane with COVID. Well, of course they wouldn't. They'd know whether someone is COVID infected and therefore you can operate international boundaries um, much more effectively. You can open these up and similarly with incoming flights, uh, arrivals quarantined for an hour while they go through testing and um, if people are not infected, allow them to carry on. So I am not in any way advocating anything that is um, dangerous. Obviously, we have to protect the capacity of our NHS. We have to protect our more vulnerable uh, members of society. But we've also got to protect business because nothing beats a fully functioning economy. The Treasury, I know it's having to borrow a lot of money. I know it's putting a lot of money into protecting jobs and business. But this is a relatively short term thing compared to the long term gain of not having mass unemployment for years and years, business failures, no income coming to the Treasury through VAT, through corporation tax, through income tax and through money being spent in the supply chain. So we are urging government to keep businesses open. That's the work of British Chambers at the moment, and that's why um, it's so great to have the support of all our members uh, of this accredited Chamber of Commerce, and particularly thank you to our patrons who, uh, through their uh, patronage of the Chamber, allow us to do that really important advocacy work. So thank you for joining us. Thank you for being a member. By supporting the Chamber, by being a member, what you're doing is supporting your business community. Uh, and that is, I can't underestimate how powerful that's been. An example we gave to Rishi Sunak, it landed on his desk and he changed government policy because he could see that it was going to adversely affect uh, a particular business of ours that we showed that's the impact of a government policy. Um, and he changed that policy, realizing that would be the same for others. So if you have any examples of need, send them to me um, and I will advocate on your behalf. So enough of the, uh, the serious stuff now. Let's uh, move on to much more fun and creative stuff. The, the <laughs> very, very um, talented uh, and erudite Paul Philpot from Fresh Air Studios, who is going to talk to us about an introduction to podcasting for business. Uh, thank you and over to you, Paul. Thank you very much. Right, let's do a couple of things. Let's get the timer set for 20 minutes. This is gonna be, this is gonna be an action packed 20 minutes. I hope so. I don't know who's providing the action, though. And um, we'll just spotlight the video feed there. Hopefully, everybody will be able to see uh, what we are going to be showing you today. So welcome to Studio Two here at Fresh Air Studios, where we're going to be giving you an introduction to using podcasts for business. We were established in 1998. We've made a lot of noise since then. If you want to find out about what we do, well, there's our website. I'm not going to tell you about that. Just have a visit and have a read. This presentation and workshop is all about you and your business. So what we'd like you to do is write down the following questions for yourself. At the end, there's going to be a and a But from you, we might like to know. Mm. Yeah, we actually thought it might be nice 
if we posed a question to you, and that would be, if you had a podcast, what would it be? And what would you call your podcast? What would its title be? Mm. And by the way, ladies and gentlemen, this is my partner in crime, Martin Burgess Moon, who is our, our media production manager. That's correct. And uh, reflecting, echoing what Stuart said earlier about being COVID secure. See, there's actually, there's <laughs> yes. actually a screen between us. There is, yes, yeah. just to protect me from him. Mm, yes. And yeah. um, the next question that I'd like you to write down and think about and try and put everything that we're covering today into context relating to you and your business is how can can I relate this to my business? We're going to show you some ideas. We're going to show you some statistics. We're going to show you some methodologies. Ask yourself this question. How can I use this for my business? And also remember the following. You're not just creating a podcast. When you venture out into the world of audio production, you're actually creating a whole myriad of content. And we'll show you how to repurpose that content um, a little bit later on. So, Let's start at the beginning, just in case you didn't know. The question is, what is a podcast? Okay, we could go through dictionary definitions and techno babble and all that kind of stuff. But putting what we probably all know already into context, a podcast could be thought of as the following. A short radio program available for you to download and listen anytime, anywhere. So you could be doing absolutely anything while you're listening to it well yes hmm, there's a thought okay so in terms of a style of podcast it could be a series that you're going to create for your business it could be a solo episode it could have um, something that's targeting a wide audience you could have something that's targeting a narrow audience it could be music speech it could be mm. drama it could be absolutely anything you want it to be about anything you want it to be the most important thing, however, is to always remember and to recall the details regarding your audience. So with regards to audience, how, where and who are they? How do they engage with podcasts and where do they tend to listen to them? Well, in terms of accessing a podcast, what you tend to use is a desktop or a mobile app. Um, there was iTunes on, 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 the, on the, uh, the iPhone. You've mm. also got the dedicated podcast app on the iPhone. Android users will probably be aware of the likes of Spotify and Google Podcasts. Those are the main methods. Um, you've also got other services such as TuneIn, Last.fm. But here's a thought. You don't necessarily have to use these publishing methods. No, because uh, you could email your podcast to somebody or you could put it on your website. You could put it on your intranet if it's an internal communications tool. So you can distribute it any way you like, depending on who or what your audience is. In terms of listening to podcasts, the reason why I love audio and I find it one of the most engaging methods of communicating is the fact, as, as Martin said earlier, you can listen to it whilst you're doing lots of other things. If, mm. like Martin, you're, you'd like to go on the treadmill. I yeah, I do. That. I yes. go on the treadmill. It, it doesn't work, but I go on mm, it. Yeah. Yeah. You can listen to a podcast while you're doing mm. that. So bear that in mind, the fact that it's, it's just like listening to the radio, but on demand. Mm. How many people listen to podcasts? Quite a lot. Um, a survey uh, just... Take, uh, take into account that a lot of surveys are US based, but here in the UK, Ofcom, the Office of Communication, did a proper investigation into the use and, um, um, uh, of podcasts throughout the UK. Um, it was published a couple of years ago, but they found that around 7.1 million people in the UK now listen to podcasts each week. That's one in eight people and is an increase of 24% over the past year and more than double over the past five years. Ofcom research also found that half of listeners have joined the podcast wave in the last two years. I was listening to a podcast at the weekend. When was the last time you listened to one? This morning. So yeah, yeah. Mm. our own actually. Um, <laughs> but that information is actually quite out of date. In the year of hell, that is 2020, engaging with media on demand has actually skyrocketed. So the audience is no doubt going to be much greater. How does that look demographically? Yeah. Well, here so, are some figures. Yeah, on the next slide, you can see that the COVID R rate in the Northeast no. has rocketed. <laughs> oh, sorry. I knew I, you were going to go there. Just but, checking, just checking <laughs> that you're paying attention i'm not chris witty uh, 7.1 million listen each week so as it says that's 2019 so that's a little bit out of date but it's probably gone up a lot since then age range is interesting 15 to 34 is the most popular category age range this is really important this next slide because this takes a look at genres and if you're going to be producing a podcast for your business the chances are you won't be making a song and dance about it you're going to be doing something that's speech based You'll be really interested to know that the genres of discussion and talk show and news and current affairs are pretty much, alongside mm. entertainment and comedy, 
this is all speech-based material yeah. so it's even easier for you to produce at home yeah, that's exactly the sort of thing that you will be doing so that's what people like to listen to so ask yourself who is your audience? Who are you going to be talking to? Mm. More, more importantly, who are you going to be engaging with? Because you're going to be creating audio for them. Um, think about the following aspects, the demographics, the age range, where they come from, what they do in their spare time, what they enjoy doing. And um, if you're selling something, think about the wider picture and um, what resonates with them. What are your objectives and how can you compete? Com com how can you create compelling, create compelling content? It's easy for you to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, the temptation <laughs> is that when, you know, usually when it's like when you're doing advertising and people say, what's your audience? And the temptation is to say everybody. But it's not necessarily the case because your your customers your listeners aren't necessarily everybody it's who relates best to your content and you want to do things aimed at them for them the big no-no though is no. doing this creating a 30-minute commercial that is not what you want to do no. you want to draw in your audience and engage with them remember that content is king it's the content that will be compelling to your listenership so you've decided you're going to create a podcast to promote your business along a certain type of theme. What type of format do you want to follow? Well, here are some examples. And um, these aren't this is this list isn't what they call exhaustive. exhaustive well, it, yes, it's not a template. Yes, is that right? a it's blueprint. Not, kind of, yes, not, there, there are lots of other methods that you can use. But here are some ideas and think about whether you can do this within your workplace. We have the monologue. Yeah, these are good. For example, if you're making an announcement of sorts, so it's just yourself, it's an audio blog style, reviews or opinions, and it's a personality focus. So it's it's essentially all about you, your voice. And, um, and these are really good and simplistic if you just want to get a straightforward message across. Another format is the talk show. Yes, you can mm. be your very own um, Terry Wogan. It's conversation based. You have a presenter that moderates and asks the questions to, a, to, a, to an audience grouped around a table, for example. They tend to be focusing on a range of questions or they tend to be around a particular topic. But the important thing for a talk show is to try and make it feel less stilted mm. and make the conversation seem nice and free flowing. Yeah. Um, here's an example of one. This is for a, a, a wine bar. It's called Wine Makes Conversation. You'll note that even though they're promoting the, the aspect of wine, the, the excitement that wine most certainly brings me, um, <laughs> the topic of conversation isn't about that. Earlier on, you mentioned about organisations blanking out anything that identifies a, a candidate on a CV. A bit extreme, isn't it? it? It can be classed as extreme, but to be honest with you, we've all got prejudices. Mm. So if you're ever questioned, it's like, as I said, it's like um, it's like photos on CVs. If you see a photo on a CV, how many times do you look at it and go, huh, actually, oh, I quite like the look of them, or I must I don't have been like so it. vain in my 20s because I, I had a photo on everything I sent out on yeah, the but, CV, but thinking could, they, like, they like the look of that. But, but they do. And <laughs> well, if they're, fits ball, and actually, huh? <laughs> <laughs> So Why Makes Conversation talks about a particular business topic, but links it back to a mutual love of wine. Um, you also have the interview format. Oh, yes. Yeah. So this is if you want to be Michael Parkinson or who is it today? Graham Norton. Graham Norton, something. yes. So structured question list. But um, it's always good not to have a script. Just use bullet points because otherwise it will sound very scripted. So you can look at those bullet points as you're talking. And if you miss anything, you can refer to them. Uh, so you can have special uh, guests and you can have people joining in by telephone or by Skype. So it's almost like a sort of Jeremy Vine-esque sort of Radio 2 type thing, really. Um, the topic of special guests is actually quite an interesting one, because if you want to further your podcast and expand your audience listenership, it might be quite a useful thing to have a look at who the influencers are within a certain um, audience group and actually invite them onto your podcast as a special guest. And you can you can almost guarantee that the first thing they will do as soon as your podcast is published featuring them is promote your output to their followers. Here's an example of an interview based podcast. This is for a web design company and um, they wanted to obviously share the knowledge and the passion that they had for for web design. So each episode takes a particular pain that small businesses uh, may well experience when it comes to using online marketing. 
What are the other things that you can go and get sorted that would help improve how you look? The main elements you need to have are the website. And as I've outlined, if you are a fairly small business, we've got five or six pages, nothing, nothing too crazy. Um, but you need to make sure the website has Google Analytics so that behind the scenes, um, you can see what's happening. That's free. That doesn't cost any money at all. And it takes a minute to install. So Google Analytics, um, set up an email address, obviously, really awful when people have AOL email addresses and things like yes. that. Have a proper email address. Don't skimp on that. Um, so you can set yourself up with MailChimp to have, so that your, your emails are going to, um, to MailChimp if you wanted to. In reality, after <laughs> working with lots and lots of small businesses, it becomes one of those things that are slightly too hard. So maybe just keep it simple with a contact us form going through to your email. Um, and you'll probably find you manage that a lot easier. Um, and I think social media, just pick one or two channels that you like. Don't, yeah. don't spread yourself too thin. So you're going to launch a podcast for your business. Could it be an interview-based format with you talking to movers and shakers or customers that you get on rather well with? Well, never know. Um, here's another example of a format. It's the magazine-style podcast. Oh, yeah, these are good. These these are like a montage. So you've got a bit of everything in here, all the ones we talked about earlier. Compelling and dynamic studio interviews. You've got reporters in there as well. So a good mix of voices, discussions going on. Uh, you could even have competitions. You've got jingles going in there. So it really does sound like a, 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 a sort of 90s music radio show, but speech, basically. And you've got a presenter acting as a continuity announcer throughout the whole thing and here's an example of one that was deployed within a large firm as, as a method of internal communications welcome to eon newsline for week beginning monday the 30th of may i'm lisa hartwell and coming up news on our new green machines and how being switched on can help when your memory is switched off but first, our more vulnerable customers are being helped with a new partnership between us and Greater Manchester's local authorities. The new agreement aims to ease fuel poverty and help customers have warmer homes. Here's Martin with more. It's the first time we've invested in promoting energy efficient products and services, working with local councils to target those most in need of help. It's hoped it will give more people access to new boilers, loft and cavity wall insulation, using those who know their community's needs best. If this scheme works out, we'll be looking to work with more councils across the UK. We've been speaking a lot about safety on Newsline recently. So um, that format is very much a similar, along similar lines as a, as a news programme with reporters and presenters all around the country. So you're going to do a podcast. Let's have a look at the anatomy of the podcast. Let's lay that podcast down on the table in front of us and take it to pieces. It's really, that's, yeah, that's really not a nice image. Don't is it, be gory now. No, no, no. Okay, so people subscribe or they visit your podcast channel. This is pretty much one, one, what one might look like. Um, you have your channel, which is the, I don't know, have a, have a think. What, what sort of the theme? Think of the theme. Uh, the theme. Uh, solicitor. Solicitor. So, um, mm. This is this is Archibald and Company Solicitors uh, <laughs> podcast channel. And within each one, you've got a different episode. Typically, these episodes are put out on a regular basis. And when you actually look at a feed, the newest episode appears at the top. However, that might not necessarily be the way you want to deploy it. You could have a podcast channel that is a repository of information, which each episode is about a different subject. So with mm. our um, solicitors, our solicitors, solicitors yeah. um, episode three could be about... Um, conveyancing. Conveyancing, yes. Mm. And episode four could be about... Um, divorce. Divorce. And yeah. episode, <laughs> and episode five could be about contracts for small businesses. Mm. If you've got a, a little audience group and they're setting up a small business, you could say to them, oh, you need to have a listen to my podcast and here's a direct link to it. And you can actually promote them mm. on an episode by episode basis. Within each episode, however, you also have further elements like this. This is like yeah. a running order. So you've got your welcome at the start. So hello, welcome to Mrs. Miggins and Sons solicitors. And you've got uh, a, li a little trailer about what's coming up in this particular podcast episode. You've got your main content, which is the, 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 the you know, the, the whole thing that you're going to be talking about in that particular episode. You could break it up a bit by having some promotion branding in the middle. 
So a little jingle talking about, um, you know, follow us on Twitter apps and so on and so forth. Then you've got the main content coming back in again. It could be the same content as before, uh, sort of part two, or you could be talking about a completely different subject matter in the same podcast. And then finally, at the end, you forward promote what's going to be coming up in the next episode so people know to tune in next time. But all these little elements of your podcast episode have strategic purposes. The bit at the top, which says what's coming up, will hopefully extend your listening time, extend your audience reach. The bit in the middle, that's encouraging interaction, getting them to subscribe, getting them to share your podcast on social media, will expand the audience that you're um, attracting. And at the end, as Martin quite rightly said, um, forward promoting what is going to appear in the next episode is good at building audience even further. Remember the following, okay, and apply this to your podcast for your business. It can be a single episode if you want it to be. You can publish it yourself by putting it on your website or sending out as an email link. Links can be shared on social media and it can also be used as a reference. It doesn't have to be something that's changing every single week. It can be a repository of audio and information. Also, if you're lucky enough to get good podcast stats, and that's a whole discussion in, in, its, in its own right, remember the following. Um, stats and trends are important when planning your content and planning your timeline. And um, also, this, this is actually re real data from some internal communications podcasts. People tend to start at the beginning of a podcast and work their way through to the end. They listen in a linear fashion. So if you've got pertinent information and stuff that you really want them to engage with, it's probably best to put it at the beginning. So most, most important information at the top. But it's probably not a bad idea to put something more exciting and compelling towards the end to extend mm. that listening time. For example, what could you put at the end of a podcast? Just a, a teaser about what's coming up. You could also have a way for people to get in touch mm -hmm. so they could ask questions that you could answer in the next episode. Or you could run a competition. You have a competition, yes. yeah. We like have competitions. Give away uh, a mug. We also like acronyms. It is the right word, isn't it? Acronym? Yeah. Yes. And this, this is, is the acronym we came up with today. We came up with this one. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, do you remember what right stands for? Return on investment to um, the enterprise. No, what is it? Return? It stands for return uh, on investment, yes. time and effort. Yeah. This is really important because it, even, regardless of what your budget is and regardless of how much you spend internally to create a podcast, you are most certainly going to be putting a lot of time and effort into doing so. So mm. you want to make that podcast go a lot, lot further. And that comes about from repurposing your content. Yes, you can look at the analytics. Yes, you can look at quality over quantity. And that mm. particularly relates to... Yeah, because you could have maybe like a thousand listeners and none of them end up using your um, your business. However, you could end up having 50, but if 25 of them use your business, that's it, that's the, you're getting to them. And it's the quality of the listenership over the quantity that matters. And be realistic about your audience, okay? So repurposing content, you've got that podcast, you've got that 20 minute bit of audio. From that 20 minute um, podcast, you could potentially have an entire month's worth of content. And here's how. In the middle with your podcast as a focus, you can create a transcript and you can turn that transcript into a... So you've got snippets for social media. You can turn that transcript into an article or several articles. Press releases they could be turned into. That's really good if you've got interviews. So if you've got a special guest, press release their mm. involvement. They're the strategic interviews, content for LinkedIn and SEO. Which is search engine optimization. Okay. Yes. Once you've got your transcript, stick it on, on, on your website mm. as that blog, as those articles, mm. and that will help towards your search yeah. engine ranking also within the description and detail of your podcast you can also put direct links to your website here's a quick look at what some of those examples look like where you can see we've taken a quote an inspirational quote from a podcast and it's been put out as a meme a meme, a meme, a meme on yeah. social media um, so finally we want to say it's now over to you we want to encourage you to give creating a podcast a go keep it simple if you want to you can just grab your mobile phone, you can stick it on voice memo, you can put it in the middle of the table, you can get yourself and a few of your colleagues, decide who's gonna be the presenter, who's gonna be asking the questions, and brainstorm some ideas and just gather around and record a podcast, engage with the audio, engage with the creative process, and then see and understand all the nuances that you can create and how that fits into using podcasts for your business. And that pretty much brings us to our 20 minutes. It does, doesn't it? What are we on? 
uh, 20 and 22 Ooh. seconds. There you go. Um, if you want to find out more, or you want to talk to us um, and send us your audio or ask mm. us any questions, please feel free to do so. And I can give you copies of, uh, of the deck um, if you want it, particularly with regards to the statistics. I'm Paul at freshairstudios.co.uk. Yeah, and I'm Martin BM at freshairstudios.co.uk. Wonderful. Thank you, guys. Uh, very eloquently and professionally done. I'd have expected no less. Um, thank you so much. That's some really interesting stuff. I've got some questions coming up privately in the chat to me. So please, anyone else, um, get ready to ask a question. And as I put in the chat earlier, preface your question with a, a little bit about yourself. This is your chance to network as well. So say a bit about yourself and your business. And we'll come back to those, um, those questions we were asked by Paul and Martin at the beginning as well uh, in just a moment. Um, Paul, I've got a question about um, uh, the maximum number of people or the numbers of people you should have in, involved in a podcast. Okay, and um, it goes back to the format, but what you most certainly don't want if you're going to do something like a roundtable discussion or interviews is have so many people that you as the presenter, you can't control the flow of audio. So I would typically say obviously at least two in order to do an interview but if you're going to have a roundtable discussion look at having no more than four or five because if you're in the situation where a is talking over b and c's got a viewpoint and they can't get it in and um, then you could you could end up having something that's slightly out of control so yes a roundtable discussion i would definitely say no more than four or five depending on your skills as a presenter Great, thank you. And we've got a couple of questions that are very similar. One's come to me privately in the chat, and one publicly. So hopefully the public person doesn't mind me calling on them to ask it. Louise Manico from Manico PR, would you like to ask your question of Paul? Yeah, I just wanted to know um, if there's an ideal length for a podcast. And I noticed that you film quite a lot of yours as well. Is that something that you would recommend or get people to aspire to doing? Um, well, first of all, in terms of duration, um, don't fall into the trap of producing content for content's sake and saying, I'm going to have an hour long podcast just because you want to have an hour long podcast. Keeping it concise is really important. You'd be, you'd be amazed at actually how many people drop off a podcast after nine or 10 minutes. And it just means that you've got half an hour of audio and stuff that you've actually wasted. So, so be very focused, um, but relate that listening time to any statistics that you're able to gather because different audience groups listen for different lengths of time within terms of with regards to internal communications podcasts, podcasts that are targeting a leadership network and um, those that have a, a vested interest in a company, how it operates, for example, tend to listen to things longer. However, frontline podcasts tend to just kind of jump in and out. And um, with regards to filming it, we're filming it now because we're, we're engaging on a, on, on, a, on a Zoom call. But there's actually no harm in doing that. Remember, first and foremost, a podcast is published on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts. They are pretty much audio only methods of, of, of communicating. So make sure you've got a decent microphone and let the audio take the lead. But there's no harm in sticking a camera on in the background, recording it and getting those little snippets of video. Because after all, you can use them, use that to help promote your podcast and all the effort you've put into it. Yeah. Thank you for that. Um, Lola, Lola Francis, would you like to ask your question? Because a couple of people have asked that, uh, that question. Yeah, I was just wondering what, what the sort of cost would be about um, putting your podcast on Spotify or the iPhone app for podcasts and stuff like that. OK, in terms of cost, you would be pleased to know that if, if you do it effectively, it shouldn't actually cost you anything in order to put it out. Um, it relies on having certain technology in the background, like a, like a web server that's set up correctly to, to serve what we call the RSS feed. Um, that's if you wanna do it yourself, you have to create things like a, a, an RSS code base um, and make sure you've got the right SSLs, all that kind of stuff. So if you've got somebody techie within your organization, go to them and say, and that specification is freely available. Um, this is what I want to do. How, how do we do it with our web server? However, if you want to use a third party to publish your podcast, there are loads out there and they're not too expensive. They're anything from like 10 pounds a month to hundred pounds a month, depending on the listenership. And all they're doing is they're taking away the pain of creating your RSS feed and they're giving you like a, an interface. But if you've got somebody who, who knows their techie stuff, there's actually nothing to prevent you from doing it yourself. Um, and you don't need to um, give any money to, to, to Apple iTunes or to Spotify in order to put it on there. Um, because they actually, in, in the background, they don't actually 
um, how can I explain? They don't actually stream the audio. The audio comes from your or a third party server. Thank you so much for that, Paul. Uh, Mark Gray, would you like to ask your question that you've put in the chat there, Mark? Yeah, thanks, thanks Stuart. Um, the one thing I was interested in is uh, I've looked at doing podcasts myself and I've just started out doing a, a freelance business with coaching and training. And there seems to be so many podcasts and every time I look that there's more there. And I'm trying to identify how do you make your stand out and how do you get people to click on you amongst the, the thousands that are there? I think the, the main thing to ask yourself is, are you wanting to produce a podcast that's broadcasting, wide casting, so anyone is your audience or one that's narrow casting? Um, with regards to podcasting for business, you will probably have an audience base that you're already able to promote it to. So your customers, for example, um, or if you're a PR company and you're working on behalf of a business, you'll pretty much know their audience profile and you'll be able to create content that is compelling to them. Um, unfortunately, as you quite rightly um, pointed out, the interest in podcasts has skyrocketed. The number of people that are creating podcasts has skyrocketed. So it really is up to you to promote it within all your social media channels. So going back to what we were saying earlier about taking little video clips and little photographs and encouraging everyone to subscribe, encouraging everyone to share it and inviting guests onto your podcast who perhaps have a bit of influence, um, more influence than maybe you have on your channels is a really, really good idea to help build that audience. It doesn't happen overnight. It can take months, it can take years. But if you start with a very well-defined audience, one that you can actively promote it to, then success is certainly within context. That's great, thank you. And do you need any special recording equipment or anything? Louise is asking about audio quality. Is there a sort of minimum audio standard before you pick people off? Um, I would say the first thing before investing in, I mean, you could, you could build a studio like this if you want to. Um, but, you know, we kind of, we, 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 we do this all the time for, for companies. But if you want to do it within the realm of your, your own home office or your own office environment, the most important thing is to get the acoustics right. Because if you're using, um, there's nothing to say you can't use the microphone on your phone. All right, there's really nothing to say you can't do that. But if you've got it in an echoey environment, say it's in your kitchen, it's going to sound bad from the get go, and you really haven't got a haven't got a chance in hell to make it sound decent. Hide under the stairs. Hide, in, yeah, actually, mm. hide under your duvet. Yeah, I've done things under the duvet. Um, no, it's true because um, I can remember when I was on holiday once, and yes. you needed something urgently, some audio from me, and um, I was in like forty five degree heat, but I had to hide under the duvet for hours and record a whole load of audio on my phone. Yes, and it was perfectly usable. Yeah, it's yeah. bad acoustics that gives it away. Great. Uh, thank you for that. Someone who's obviously uh, too shy to ask this, uh, uh, they're probably <laughs> because they're not confident, says, what would Paul advise to anyone who isn't confident in speaking with a microphone or communicating to others? Are there any hints or tips you could share? Um, partner with somebody who perhaps is more confident. Um, you've probably got a lot of things to say as, as a business person. Um, if you want to have a podcast, say it's about you and your area of expertise, it probably won't even seem right. Mm. You sat in a room talking to yourself. Yeah, about if you've yourself. got somebody to bounce off, it helps. And, um, you know, it's like most breakfast shows on the radio these days have two people bouncing off each other. If you're sitting on your own and you're having to kind of like react to yourself, it's not as easy as if you've got somebody there with you because you're naturally very, very shy and retiring. Aren't I am, you? yeah. And yeah. you're only the way you are because of me. So um, this, is what, this is what happens. When you've got two people to bounce off each other, then you start to come out of yourself a bit without even realizing it, I think, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Also remember, the great thing about podcasts is they can be um, really easily edited. You can cut out the mistakes um, you, you obviously you have detailed editing that you sometimes have to go through at a professional level, but basic editing, if you want to do it again, you do it again and you redo it again and you don't have to worry about setting up lights and you're not in front of a camera and you're not under the, under the spotlight. So if you're working with somebody that you trust and you say, I want to have this podcast about me, these are the questions I want you to ask me. Um, that's a really good place to start. Like me, Paul, you're shy and retiring. Um, I, yeah, we're, <laughs> we're <laughs> Uh, I, uh, I'm told I have a very good face for radio, uh, so I think podcast is probably better for me than, uh, than the video interviews. Um, speaking of which, we have um, we asked questions at the start. Um, should we go back mm. to those questions, see what people have written down, what their thoughts are? 
Um, and also people have been very shy about introducing themselves. This is their um, 10 seconds of fame as they get to answer the question by saying who they are and what they do. So we get a bit of networking thrown into this as well. Um, um, and uh, so how about we get those questions back up um, and go from there? Are you able to do that? Am I, am I throwing a, a, a wobbly in? Like he's, he's thinking, God, it's only because I didn't question, write the questions no, down. Yeah. I've written my answers down, but I can't remember oh, what the right. question was. <laughs> oh. yeah, so my, okay. uh, my answer to the first one, while you're, you're finding out what is... Right, we, Stuart, okay. So, okay. Go on. Li live on BBC One. If you had a podcast, what would it be? <laughs> uh, mine is In Conversation with Stuart Alford, Chief Executive of Devon and Plymouth Chamber of Commerce, interviewing the great and the good of our city and county. So not the life and times of Stuart Elford then? It would be very short and very dull. That <laughs> podcast would get less than one listener. <laughs> now, I think um, quite seriously, we have thought about doing an In Conversation With event where we get um, people that um, I'd like to kind of get behind the the headlines behind the public face of some of these people. So, you know, I don't want to name, well, I suppose I, do, I can name names because they may or may not be available. I'd like to interview Tudor Evans. I'd like to, to get him on and talk more about him as a person and what his, his thoughts and views are rather than just a, a, a sort of political uh, statement, things like that. And I'd be interested to know um, um, what the, the chamber members would think of that, who they'd like to hear from, who's their business idol, who's their person they think, you know, I'd really love a chat with them. I mean, my, my, not not business as such, but one of my idols is Barack Obama. I'd love to speak to him. I think he's a fascinating, interesting guy. I think it wouldn't that be... And, and, I, I don't think and he most certainly himself. wouldn't refuse no. coming on your show. No, clearly, no. Well, there you are. There's your challenge for you, Paul. If you want to make a friend for life, get Barack Obama to do an interview with me, and then and then you'll be you'll be. I'll give you free membership for life of the chamber. <laughs> we, we could probably arrange the spit and image puppet, but <laughs> <laughs> so, um, that's so in all seriousness, um, um, what what do people think? Uh, um, uh, oh, you've got a very kind, um, you've obviously bung someone an envelope full of cash because Fiona's saying very nice things about uh, about you in the chat there. Fiona Frey says, she can personally vouch for your expertise. Um, and if you're considering taking the plunge, I was a definite novice and had completed an interview edit in the first meeting with them. So there we are. So that, that's really, really good. Um, Lorraine Clark, uh, her podcast will be Tales from the Twisted Tea Room. Uh, Lorraine, you're oh, going to have oh. a plane. What would that be? I would listen to that. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. What? No idea what it would be about, but it sounds fascinating. It would be tales from Thailand and tea. Let's put it that way. Oh, well, that's well. perfect. My mother, my mother loves tea, so <laughs> we'd definitely be listening to that. Well, that sounds great. So, um, uh, I did miss a question in the chat, and um, somebody's asked, "What is the biggest opportunity missed by not utilising a podcast?" Ooh. I would say embracing the nuances of verbal communication. Um, a lot of people focus really heavily on creating video content. Um, but I, I was watching a TED talk only recently to say that there's been a lot of heavy focus on producing video and having things like um, Zoom calls where everybody's under the spotlight. Um, but the nuances and the, the way that you can express emotion and the way that you can ask questions that are seemingly challenging but actually get away with it on a podcast or on you know your own radio program on demand that you can do and um, which you can't necessarily get away with in video it's so just very personal really personal mm. if you think about it if somebody's they're basically sticking you in their ear hole mm. and i mean obviously Stuart, i, I would do that any day i'm glad you um, said that yeah, probably yeah <laughs> um you know it's a very personal it's a very intimate medium you can use things like microphone proximity and kind of like be nice and, and sultry to somebody or it can be exciting. It's just the nuances of audio, I still think have got a long, long, uh, long list of opportunities mm. that, you, that are really worth capturing. Um, going back to your, your idea for, for doing interviews, Stuart, um, when you're a good interviewer, you can play devil's advocate on behalf of the audience. You can pose the questions that the audience aren't there to ask, that you know, people don't have that opportunity. It's a, it's a really, it's a high degree of responsibility to be an interviewer.
Yeah, and I think um, yeah, I'd I'd relish doing it. I think it'd be it'd be fascinating. And and please do um, um, in the chat, people put down if there's anyone you'd like to see us interview, if someone you'd like to hear from, put put it in there. I think the the, the best interviewers. Um, you, you named two there, Michael Parkinson and um, Graham Norton. What they've managed to do is incredible, is they get their um, guests to trust them. Uh, and they say things you think you'd never say that on another show. You'd never have yeah, had yeah. that, um, be able to be so relaxed to be able to say the things you say. Yeah, the, the best interviewers listen. I think that's the, the key, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And I'd say that element of trust is easier to achieve if you're in a podcast environment where you have, I mean, as we've mentioned earlier, the, 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 the video cameras that are here are mainly for this feed. We don't always use video cameras. It's just an aside. Most of the material that we produce, the studio links around the UK, we don't see them. We, we've never met half the people that we interview with on a, on a daily basis, but it's easier to gain trust. I don't know why, it's just you're mm. not, you don't feel as though you're under the spotlight as much as you are when you're in front of a lens and you kind of let your guard down. Yeah, that's why we say about the bullet points thing as well and not having things heavily scripted because you can, if you have a list of questions and you ask a question, you get a, an answer. Rather than moving on, straight on to the next question you've got written down, there might be something in there that they, in that answer that you might want to pick up on and get them to expand on. So that's a, a key thing as well, is mm. not have everything too heavily scripted. Very good point, good, yes. Good, good listening skills. Um, mm. My ex-wife always said I had two faults. Um, I didn't listen and um, something else. Um, <laughs> hey! Oh, I'm on a roll today. Oh, they're coming out today. Yeah. So come on, guys. Um, uh, oh, I've got I've got another one in here. Um, ah, sorry. So Zoe's put this to everyone, so I'm sure she wouldn't mind me saying, um, I'm Zoe from Veganish, and she's put her website address in there. A podcast scares me to death. If I were to, though, I'd probably call it something like the Vegan Challenge, because I like to wow people with interesting meat-type replacements. Uh, I'd love to challenge Tudor, he does a cooking with Tudor on Facebook. It's brilliant. I've seen it uh, cooking with the counselor. Um, he, so yeah, let, let's do that. Let's get Tudor um, cooking uh, fish. Perhaps you could challenge him to say whether or not you thought it would be um, uh, meat or, or fish or not, um, if they're that good a replacement. So let's... let's uh... Actually, Stuart, I think you've touched on something there um, in its own right. That, that sounds like a great um, podcast series, Challenge Tudor. Mm. I mean, yeah. there's, there's, a, there's a gap there. Who is it used to do it on, on telly? Annika. Annika. Challenge yeah. Annika. I mean, can you imagine Tudor Evans in a, in a jumpsuit? What more do you want? Let, let's, let, let, I think he'd quite like that. <laughs> yeah. I genuinely think he would like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tudor Evans in a chump, jumpsuit in a pot full of gravy. Sounds perfect. <laughs> um, so uh, Damien's put a, a comment in there about... Um, ideas for content. I think what we're finding here, I mean, we're having a laugh, but I think the, the, the point is, if you make it entertaining and you, and you put content in that people, I don't know, weren't expecting something new, something different, something interesting, something funny. Uh, I think there's too much of the same old, same old uh, transmission out there, isn't there? Where, where people are on um, transmit mode rather than on, on thinking about their audience and, and some interesting, uh, interesting comment and interesting content stuff that, that mm. brings out the human in people that's the good thing that's what we've been saying about audio it makes it more personal it makes it more human and never be afraid of, of humor because no. it's a, a great way of getting things across not everything but a lot of things are easier to digest when you're enjoying yourself only this morning we had a we had a company into the studio called positive purchasing and their procurement firm um so procurement is probably one of those subjects that will make everybody just fall asleep so the mm. challenge that we've got is to try and make it exciting and compelling and interesting um we're going to try and put the humor into it if ever the one <laughs> somehow um when we have special guests on we're going to humanize them we're going to find out about them their passions give them 60 seconds on on on, on a spotlight of you know what makes them tick what do they do in their spare time? What on earth made them get involved in whatever it is they're involved in? Remember that we're all human and actually we're all pretty nosy as well. So that's often a good starting point. Uh, I think you're probably superhuman, Paul, but um, yes, thank you for that. Um, you are, your second question, if you had a podcast, what would it be? And the other one was um, thinking about your audience, I think, wasn't it? Who, who are you aiming at? And, um, and what are you trying to achieve by podcasting? And I think for mine, if, if we did these in conversation with, uh, events 
I, I think um, I try and take everything back to what the chamber's here for, and you can hopefully see it behind my head here. It says, connect, <laughs> grow, succeed. So I think it would be about um, helping businesses succeed, showing the, um, the value of the chamber through the connections we have and the sort of content we can, we can bring people, sharing best practice and so forth. Um, but doing it in a, as you say, a fun, lighthearted kind of way. Yeah, absolutely. And people like to know about things like entrepreneurship and um, small business backstories. Uh, you know, every, everything that we produce has a backstory. Every small business has a history. Um, every family run business. Mm. OK, it's often a cliche in advertising. We're a family run business. But if you've got 50 years worth of heritage and your, you know, your massive chain of, of stores came from one small um, you know, garage mm. sale, that historical context, that entrepreneurship and that and all the, the pitfalls that you, you encounter when setting up your business, that's really compelling, interesting things. You just need to bring it to life with a yeah. bit of personality. I think uh, every business has something in common, regardless of how big or small they are or what they do. They all have something in common, and that is they all started from somewhere. Yeah, absolutely. And the story of how, the, how businesses start is fascinating and it's something everybody can relate to and everybody will want to hear about because you've all had challenges and you've all overcome them otherwise you wouldn't still be here so how did you overcome those challenges because that could be vital information for everybody to hear and very inspirational mm. yeah I it, you're absolutely right I love hearing about how businesses started and what the challenges they faced and um, and I find it quite funny as well. When I left the police service, I did 17 years in the police service. And when I left, my colleagues thought I was mad. Like, what are you going to do? I'm going to start my own PR business. And they said, well, you know, what, what do you know about that? Well, I don't know, but I'm going to learn. Um, and then a friend of mine said to me, I think you're very brave. I said, what, what do you mean? He said, well, you know, running your own business. And I said, well, I'm not brave running it now. I was brave once. And that was when I handed him the notice. I said, after that, it's, it's just tenacity. Yeah. And I found out later that Amelia Earhart said that. She said, bravery is the decision to act. The rest is merely tenacity. And it's just getting on with it and finding a way. And uh, I think that was uh, really good. Um, Lindsay's put a fantastic idea in. She's Lindsay from Access for Lofts, Loft Storage. If she had a podcast, it would probably be an attack your attic or love your loft challenge. Tips for clearing your loft, storage tips decluttering with wine. I like that. I like, uh, oh, I like that, yeah. I like with wine, yeah. See, that, that's, a, that's a, a good point from Lindsay there, because um, I know Access for Lofts, they're, they're a loft ladder in, installation business, but that's actually not what they're about. They're about, um, you know, helping you improve your lifestyle by getting rid of all that junk and sticking it in the loft. So that comes back to understanding your audience and saying, I'm not going to produce a series of podcasts about the benefits of this ladder, that ladder and the other ladder. That's not going to attract the audience that you want to talk to. But if you did a series of podcasts that contained practical hints, tips and advice on decluttering your home, improving your lifestyle and um, what storage methods are, uh, are good, how it's not very easy to move uh, home into in, into a bigger property. So how do you make the most of what you've got? Those topics will attract the audience that are likely to buy your product. And that's putting the, the, the content first and putting the, that content into the audience context. Absolutely. And I, I, so I, we've only got a few minutes, but I'm just going to pick on a couple of people to see. And I'm really sorry if I embarrass you or anything, but I think there's somebody here I've met. And if it's the wrong person, I apologise profusely. But Joanne, I think I met you at Argyle and I think you had quite an interesting background. Didn't you do something to do with protection or something like that? Uh, Argyle, really? Yeah. Protection? Yes, definitely. <laughs> So I'm not sure about the location quite so much, but yes, you're right. Um, so I've worked in close protection for quite some time, um, about 10 years or so. I'm actually in between at the moment because previously I was running a small organisation, a small security organisation. Um, but actually, I've now gone back to education. So I'm off at the university and I'm studying events management with tourism. Um, but I do love a, a good drama. Well, not so much a drama. I love... <laughs> I do love a, a good, um, what's the word for it? When something goes drastically wrong. So I'm quite quite uh, focused on, <laughs> I know, um, counter-terrorism and things like that is actually where I want to go in the future. <laughs> I think 
that's There's just a mix. I don't think it was actually the football anyway, Joanne. I think I think we were introduced by mutual friends at a corporate event, but I can't remember what it was. Yes, it probably would have been. Yes, yeah, yeah. that's one. But uh, I would have thought your um, podcast would have some interesting uh, uh, anecdotes if it was close protection, but probably things you're not allowed to tell us anyway. Exactly, exactly what I was going to say. Yeah, you just can't tell. <laughs> um, Okay, um, I'm going to pick on one more person. God, who can I pick out? There are all these faces looking at me. Tim's iPad Air. Tim, is that Tim York done? I can't see because there's a tiny little square on my screen. Hi there. Yeah, it is me. I don't know why I'm on iPad Air opposed to me today, but here we are. How are you now, doing? What, what would your um, uh, podcast be and, and why? Well, uh, interestingly, uh, very much what the guys were talking about. Um, you know, I, I'm looking after business, businesses across all industries. So I meet all sorts of founders and I'm helping them with their business strategy, changing their business um, according to, to, to where the new opportunities are. And again, there's always a backstory. Uh, and actually mm. to involve somebody like me is a massive step for somebody who's grown their organisation through passion and through knowledge. And it's re very much about one of the first things I do is understand their story uh, uh, and why they do it. And, and quite often, definitely down here, businesses have grown through passion and knowledge. Um, so there's always really good um, backstories. And for me, it would be very much about talking about that journey because uh, I'd want founders to kind of um, understand and bounce off uh, other, other people's journeys and learn from it. And there's always common struggles, common challenges. Um, and to be able to inspire people to do something slightly different. So would you say, are you a troubleshooter? I don't like to say that, really, because it almost sounds... Well, maybe that's a yes then, isn't it? I would say, or, or maybe, are you a troublemaker? It, it, no, no, I don't like the word strangely, and people might hate me for this. I don't like the word disruption. No, I, I, actually, I prefer innovation. I prefer... It, it's about building on the foundations and everything that's gone before. So I, I feel there's much more positive language to be used. So it sounds to me that you've got a really good repertoire of case studies that you can bring into play and probably a, a, a fairly good little black book of people that um, will come on to your podcast and share with you those experiences and how you've helped them overcome them. I think that's a, I think there's a lot of mileage in that. I've seen a lot of people completely transform their, their, their personalities, their energy, their confidence, all of those things come through within sometimes just months. So, yeah, it's fantastic. That's the rewarding part of what I do. That's really great. So, um, Tim, you'll probably be one of my guests on In Conversation With. Uh, <laughs> we're rapidly, sadly, coming to the end of our uh, hour. There's a question in the chat. there: Are we able to access the recording of this session? Yes. And Olivia will be. Um, putting that up on our, our website so you can watch that um, and on our YouTube channel, um, which is great. Oh, and uh, Helen's just answered that, so great, thank you. Um, thank you so much uh, to Paul and that for fresh air. I really appreciate uh, that. I really appreciate your time um, and for giving us a really interesting and entertaining insight. Oh, uh, I completely agree. Uh, I completely agree with Tim there about, I don't like the word disruptor. People think it's cool to be a disruptor. I'm a market disruptor. Well, I prefer collaboration and so oh, forth. So um, that's the dog going nuts to excuse me. It's probably time to tell you that as the dog is uh, telling me that it must be getting to three o'clock, time, um, time to wrap up the, uh, the event. Um, so uh, thank you so much to our speakers. Thank you all to you. Um, let's... Uh, hopefully see you at the next event don't forget to um put in the uh on social media with hashtag chamber live um and i look forward to seeing you all at our next event thanks very much everyone bye bye <laughs>